Welcome back to Clumsy Dog. Today we're going to be doing some really bad meat. But to make it good. Good bad meat. You'll see what I mean. It's top sirloin and bottom round. If you know anything about those cuts, they're really tough, they're really chewy. And if you don't spend the extra time and the extra work, you're basically just making some kind of beef jerky. We got a recipe for a marinade off the internet. It's uh, soy sauce, olive oil, garlic. I'll put the ingredients uh, probably up here or there. And uh, the one thing that we uh, changed out was for the balsamic vinegar, we found this blood orange glaze stuff. Looks like this. And it's amazing. It makes it really flavorful. Uh, so imagine blood orange glaze, balsamic vinaigrette, it's really good stuff. So we're going to chop up some garlic, we're going to put all the ingredients together, we're going to put it in a bag, let it sit overnight. Soy sauce, honey, olive oil. That blood orange glaze, garlic, pepper. Mix it all together. All right, so our meat's been marinating for 14 hours now. I've got the chimney warming up on the uh, grill outside. And now we're going to pat our meat dry. And then we're gonna put it on the, uh, the grill, the, gr the grill. So we're gonna pull the meat out here. Oh man. Oh man. If you could smell this marinade. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I should have tenderized it. Hopefully enough that it isn't too too chewy. Give this to my assistant. Thank you, sweetie. Alright, so muy importante, pat your meat. Don't rub your meat, at least not in public. You can pack your meat, you know. Garlic that's on there. I'm not worried about getting every piece off. We like garlic, but all this liquid here, we want to sear this when we get it on the grill so we can get that nice, that nice steak crust that's on there. Because all throughout this meat is that marinade. You can see how the meat doesn't look red anymore. It's this deep brown. That's from the soy sauce and that balsamic vinegar with the orange, uh, the blood of orange on there. Oh yeah. I'm just feeling this too. It feels, it feels real tender. So you know it's gonna be good. All right. You don't have to go psycho mode getting it dry. Just get most of the liquid off there. And uh, like I said, we're gonna put it on the grill. Uh, we're gonna sear both sides. We're gonna probably do five to six minutes per side, you know? Play it by ear, just listening for the sizzle and whatnot. And then also, um, our ending temperature, this is very important. We wanna be between 125 and 135. We're looking for medium rare to medium. Um, if we undercook it on the rare side, it's gonna be chewy. And if we go too far on it, it's gonna be all dried out and chewy as well. So you have to hit that sweet spot of medium rare to medium. 
so and they're not especially thick cuts of meat so there's not going to be an awful lot of carry over temperature so if we get these off right at 130 tent them in some foil while we get everything else ready let them rest for a while we should be at that medium rare to medium mark and then they should smell a lot of shit off of this you know what i mean this should be uh should be tender you might be able to sense my apprehension because honestly i've never done bottom round before i've done top sirloin before and it's worked out but the bottom round these down here these concern me these are uh, this is a huge working muscle man like that's that's chewy stuff man usually you're only putting that in like a stew that you've been boiling everything for 25 hours so we'll see how this works out with the marinade 14 hours 130 to 135 probably about the mark i want to pull it at and we'll, uh, we'll let you know how it tastes let us be the guinea pigs for you so i'll bring you back when we uh when we have the grill ready and we lay these bad boys on there How do you know when it's done? Well, it's finished cooking. How do you know when it's finished cooking? You have to trust your gut. Look, this kind of this kind of talent comes with years of experience. You can't teach it overnight. I know you're getting nervous, but I don't feel like it's time to flip it. It's been almost six minutes. Alright, let's flip it now. Since you're getting worried. Look, guys that are watching the video, my uh, videographer here was getting worried. We were at the six minute mark and we didn't flip the meat yet. After all, these things take time on the grill. It might be 400, 450 degrees, but you want that good caramel on the crust. You need to, you need to wait. If you're not, if you're looking, you're not cooking. That's what they say, right? I don't know what I'm waiting for, but I, I know it when it happens. Let's just put it that way. Look y'all, she's still getting nervous. She's like, it's been three minutes on this side. Just want to check again. I'm like, no. Look, grilling and barbecue, which this isn't really, I don't know if I would call this barbecue so much as it's just grilling, you know? But if you're doing anything and you're rushed to do it, like, oh, I gotta go do this, I gotta do that. It's like, you're not doing something right and you should stop and you should reevaluate what you're doing because at no point should you feel like you're rushed. That being said, you should pay attention, right? Because we want to hit that very precise temperature range. Um, but, I mean, I know we're not there yet. We've been on for like six minutes or nine minutes. I don't know. Not enough to hit it yet. So, um, if you're new starting out, that'll come in time. If you're older, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about when I say, you know you know it when you see it or when you feel it she just held up her hand it's been five whole minutes on that one side put a comment down there would you open the lid right now to check it keep in mind it's your old lady that's telling you that she should probably check it i know i'm with you no i'm not opening it no Alright. Looks like we hit our temperature, so. Alright, 
right, before we saw into this, uh, figure out if it's uh, good or not. I have my phone. Okay, okay. So, here's what it looks like. We let it rest for, honestly, maybe 10 minutes or so. It's kind of a thin cut, so it should be pretty. Another trick, if you don't feel like it's going to be tender enough, you just go thin with it, you know. So this is the bottom round. Oh. That's really good. Here. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that flavor. Oh yeah. Oh, that turned out really well. Yeah. Mm. It's like meat candy. Nice sauce and sweetness from the honey. I'm tasting that blood orange mm -hmm. balsamic too, more than I thought that I would. Yeah, you want to taste? Yeah. All right. Mm. Yeah. Here you go, sweetie. Let them know how you think. What is it? Does it taste good? Yeah. It has juice in it. It has juice in it, yeah. she says. All right. Well, I think, well, y'all, I think we're going to have supper. I'll see you next time. Oh, it's candy. All right, George, you want to taste some more meat? Yeah. Here, this is the top sirloin. You like that? Emma, you want to taste some of this? Yeah. This is the top sirloin right here. You tell me how that tastes. Is it good? Is it bad? How good? How good? Bustin'. <laughs> Bustin'. You're too young to be using those words. You're not allowed to hang out with your sister anymore. You're three years old. Why are you saying bustin'? All right, so I forgot that we didn't try the top sirloin. Here, this is Mama's top sirloin. Look at that bend over on itself. That was pretty thin, but still. The top sirloin worked out much better. So the bottom round over here, that one's very rough, not gonna lie. You gotta slice it really thin. This top sirloin over here though, this is outstanding. This is very outstanding. So, I got I got street urchins begging for more meat. So we're gonna get this all sliced up. We'll give you a shot of the final product. I think we have some uh, potato salad and some corn. Mm. Sorry, I'm talking my mouthful. Um, this worked out very well. I'm very surprised at how well it worked out. So. see you there. So I had some final thoughts about this top sirloin and bottom round. My wife and I and two little girls ate all of it. We ate all of it. We ate it, the potato salad and the corn. Um, we were pretty hungry but we did eat all of it. So while we were trying to shoot for like a budget friendly kind of meal, I got to thinking the price per meal, like there's no leftovers on this uh, top sirloin, right? But if I cook a brisket, I've got leftovers for like two, three, four days sometimes. And uh, you can either eat a, the brisket straight, or you can put in the mac and cheese or the beans. You see those videos on, on my channel here about how to make the brisket exciting again, that kind of stuff. But there's no top sirloin uh, leftovers. It's all gone. We ate it up. It was delicious. It was outstanding. But that's what I'm saying, like, so price per meal on the brisket is probably more like five to eight dollars per meal. You can add a couple of extra dollars here and there to spice it up, change it up, do a little bit something different. But this meat here, it was one meal and, and then it's gone. It, it, is a, it is cheaper cuts of meat, but it's not a lot, right? So you could probably get some leftovers, but you would have to buy like a bunch of top sirloin and stuff like that. And then, you know, I don't know. Are you really saving money? Maybe, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it was a fun cut of meat to work with, to be honest. Um, it was challenging. The, the marinade uh, took a long time, but honestly, I'll smoke a brisket for 12, 13 hours too. So 
What's the difference between doing that and just letting it sit in the refrigerator? Um, I don't know. It was just a thought I was thinking was that, you know, we don't have any leftovers. Because, honestly, I was in here killing, cleaning the grill. My first thought is, I want that for breakfast tomorrow. But there's no breakfast on it tomorrow. So, I don't know. It was just the last thought of mine. So, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.